You think you just fell out of a coconut tree? <laughs> the context of which, guys, I have had that stem stuck in my head forever. Oh my God. You know what I ever talk about on here? My autism. So let's talk about it now. Cue the intro. Guess who decided to start construction as soon as I press play? Those guys over there. <laughs> well, that's just the life of living in Mexico. A lot of y'all don't know that I live in Mexico. I feel like I should probably talk about it a little bit more. But you know, since I have these goals of being on Love Island season seven, and we're gonna manifest this into existence, I'm like, let me put myself out there more. Cause right now, all I talk about is pleasure, positivity, and wellness of your sex and I think that's amazing but also there are so many other facets to me so today I want to talk about my autism um because I just made a video on TikTok and uh I guess I'll just talk about something that I've learned um also my nose is running so excuse me okay but first things first I would just like to start off by giving a shout out to uh Kamala Harris for this freaking amazing vocal stem that I have right now if you're not on TikTok you might not know about this I think this is from the Drew Barrymore um the Drew Barrymore show, but there's this clip and Kamala's like, you think you just fell out of coconut tree? <laughs> the context of which you exist. And I don't know the rest of it. I heard that it was like a really deep statement that she was saying, but I just, I just focus on that. Okay. So first things first, let's start off with how I found out that I was autistic um, or that I was living with autism. Um, and then we're going to talk about some ways that it's shown up in my life, some ways it's impacted me. And then we'll talk about some ways that I'm learning to cope with it and uh, live through it because it's been a dream. So first, the way that I found out that I had autism. And I think this is the way that a lot of people found out that they had autism. So shout out to Netflix. Uh, but there's this show called Love on the Spectrum. If I can find a picture, I'll put it right here. And Love on the Spectrum is about a group of young people. Originally, I think it was young people living in Australia. I don't know why my nose is running right now. But it's a group of young people living in Australia, and they are all on some piece, like some form of the spectrum. Now, there are a couple of things that I've learned just throughout my whole journey of being autistic. But one thing I would like to say is that a lot of people say, um, oh, like I'm high functioning autistic or, or, or they're low functioning autistic. And it's like, that's actually not fair at all. Um, so I just felt like I should teach that to someone as I learned that through, I think, TikTok, shout out to TikTok, but yeah, so there's literally a spectrum and it's not like higher, lower on the spectrum. It's just different. Um, I think that's what the spectrum looks like. Just like with my bisexuality, like there's a spectrum when it comes to bisexuality. So yeah, I, uh, I would say that different types of ways that autism can show up in people's lives are some people may be nonverbal, which means that they don't speak um, and they don't communicate necessarily with words as, as their main language. Um, some people may not necessarily know how to pick up on certain social cues that maybe someone who's quote unquote neurotypical, I really don't believe that that exists, but whatever, neurotypical, um, they're, they, they might be able to kind of pick up more on social cues. Like if some, I don't know, it, the concept, of, not the concept, but like autism as a whole is very interesting to me because as much as people are like, oh, you should know this, you should know that, you should know this socially. Like I know a lot of people who I guess would be considered neurotypical who still don't pick up on social cues. They still don't, you know what I'm saying? Like it's certain things and, and maybe it's, I don't know. I don't know. I just personally feel like everybody has a little bit of neurodivergence in some form of some way. Um, especially considering the fact that I also diagnosed myself with ADHD. So hence the way that this video is going, we're going to just be jumping around from topic to topic because uh, I would definitely talk about love of the spectrum, not talk about ADHD. But that's totally okay because I'm just learning to love myself in that way. But back to love of the spectrum and I'll get to the ADHD and the neurodivergence in general. Um, love of the spectrum definitely taught me that I was on the spectrum of autism and I'm trying to think of what like the prominent things were. 
Oh, the, the main thing that I think really made me realize that I was um, on the spectrum was my over stimulation. I get extremely overstimulated by smells, by sounds, by feelings, but specifically sounds. Like I will have a breakdown um, and I just like quite literally can't function. Also, I've noticed that like there are certain things that just other, I say, I guess I'll say like neurotypical people may not notice. Like for instance, my refrigerator, there's this like hum that happens daily. And to the average ear, maybe they wouldn't be bothered by that hum. They might not even hear that hum. To me, it's like beep right here in my ears, just constant just stimulation. So I very much so find myself wanting to like be in silence. That's why people always want to hang out with me. And I'm like, as much as I talk about like social breaks and social batteries and stuff like that, it's like, no, sometimes I just need to fucking regulate. Like I can't hear a voice. I don't care how much I like you. I just don't want to hear a voice right now. So I think that's been like a major part of me learning, um, coming into grips with that. Um, with, with the fact that I have autism and I'll be honest with you, I actually felt more free once I learned or realized that I had autism. One thing that I think fucking sucks is that autism is actually not even really diagnosed in young girls. Like it's very much so a delayed diagnosis when it comes to young women. So a lot of young girls didn't know they had autism or were not diagnosed until they were like fucking 14, 15. Like by then you've gone through this entire stage these stages of growth in your life and you're thinking that there's something like there's just something happening within you it's nothing wrong it's just you but you feel like it's something wrong and then when you finally get the words to put it together that no i'm neurodivergent like it's actually a superpower and like i'm actually just highly fucking sensitive and like i'm not like the rest that's that's a beautiful thing and it takes the pressure off um, another thing that I definitely realized that I used to do, uh, that is something that happens when you're autistic is masking and people pleasing. So like I used to say that I was a chameleon and I could like match everybody's energy, you know, like what, what do we, I, oh, you're like, you're hype. Okay. I'm hype. Like, oh, you're chill. Like, all right. I'm chill. Like, cause I'm masking. I'm, and I'm thinking it's just like matching the energy I'm around, but it's like, no, you're literally masking the person that you are to match and mimic the other person that you're with. Um, and we say that we're talking about something, I don't even freaking agree with the person, but I'm like, yeah, like I just fucking want this conversation to go smooth and go well and to be liked. So that has been very helpful just along my people pleasing journey because I've definitely, um, since moving to Mexico, have decided like to step out of that because I was people pleasing everybody else, but I wasn't pleased. So what kind of life and quality of life is that? Um, another way that I learned that autism shows up in my life is like stimming, right? So I have vocal stims, like I talked about in the beginning of this video, like the, the Kamala Harris quote, or like I just heard another one, um, from Jonas Dean. It's like, time is skimming away from me. Yeah. <laughs> There's another one. Um, oh my God, when Kendrick Lamar, when he's, this is first came out, like, what is it? The birds? Her tripling okay like those do something to me i don't really know i don't know the science behind the stem um i do have physical stems as well like i'll sway i'm definitely a swear um or like a i i don't necessarily do the front to back sway a lot but i'm sure i do sometimes but I, i'll usually like do more of like a side to side sway uh, that could be genetics from like slave ancestry or it could be my stimming but like even this right now this feels really fucking good um sometimes I have to sometimes I do try to stop myself from stimming if I'm out I'll be like oh like I'm rocking too much but now I'm just like fuck it like let me fucking swing um but I do I did I do believe that stimming helps uh somehow something with your mind mind waves i don't want to lie to y'all so let's just do some research about that later on maybe we'll talk about it on the podcast but yeah um i'm trying to think about any other stims that i know of i feel like i have stims in my hands but i can't really think of them right now so i think this used to be a stim <laughs> like you remember uh, from the amanda show she'd be like Maha! like i think that this was my stim for a really long time and then I remember recently this guy made that face and I was like, oh my God, is he my soulmate? And he was far, 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 far from it. But yeah, that's really funny. Um, that's probably like the, the ways that my autism shows up the most. Uh, and, and so many other ways I just can't necessarily think about right now. But yeah, then we have my ADHD. My ADHD shows up in just a disorganization of thoughts or 
twenty thousand thoughts happening at the same time. Even I remember my dad was like, "Tia, you literally used to have from like hobby to hobby to hobby." Still do, um, and I didn't realize that that's literally a form of ADHD. Like it's a, a symptom, say, of ADHD or like a what's the word? Like a I don't know what the word is, but it's from ADHD. And I used to really judge people for like even being diagnosed with ADHD because there was a time where I felt like like the pharmacists were like, "Oh shit!" Like okay. There are people in school that can't concentrate. Let's come up with this fucking drug and give it to all the kids. And it seemed like a lot of boys, once again, because they weren't testing girls for neurodivergence in any way, uh, but a lot of young boys were getting diagnosed with ADHD and then were getting medicated. And it's like, but they're young boys with energy. Like, so why can't a young boy just have energy? Why does it have to be diagnosed with ADHD? It wasn't until I got older to where I learned like, okay, well, for some people, they do say that medication helps them. Now, do I feel like the medication helps them? It's not for me to say, but I do know that there are a lot of people that I know that are, that are on ADHD medication and they say that they feel better. Now, there are huge spectrums of ADHD once again. So maybe, yes, like maybe they're, they had such disorganized thoughts and couldn't finish a freaking task. So... So that's how the medication helped them. Maybe it's just a fucking placebo. I'm down for placebos. Give me a motherfucking sugar pill and I'll take it and act like it's helping something, whatever. But I have just never been a proponent for like medication for things like that. But if it helps you, go for it. As long as it's not hurting you. If it's hurting you, that's when you need to do some reevaluation. So um, that's probably my biggest thing when it came to like ADHD was just not wanting to be medicated. So then when I learned like, oh, this is how it's showing up in my life. Okay. And I also realized that I actually do somewhat medicate like i think i medicate with like plant medicine i think that that's definitely like a form of trying to just get my brain to you know like so i've had to come up with like a different i've had to shift my mindset when it comes to what medication looks like and what adhd is um it's like it's almost the same thing for depression right like i used to really judge people who were depressed and who were on medication and then when i became depressed i learned like i although i didn't go necessarily the medication route of pharmaceutical medication i um I, I go back to the thing of like, if it's, if it's helping you, then beautiful. But if it's hurting you and you're still depressed, like, did y'all ever see that commercial? This is not supposed to be about, medi about medication, but did y'all ever see that commercial where they were talking about, um, oh my God, what was it? Depression. And they were like, if you're on this depression pill and it's not working, take this other depression pill, but don't stop taking that first depression pill. It's like, ugh, what kind of racket is this? So anyways, yeah. So those are my thoughts about uh adhd and i definitely understand like the disorganization of the thoughts i definitely understand like the not being able to necessarily focus like focus is definitely a thing i feel like sometimes my brain is on like 20 different tabs um so that's really really interesting for me and i'm sorry i just now i'm just thinking back back to the part where i said that i don't know if people's adhd medication is working so again that's a fucked up thing to say but you know what i'm really allowing myself to be fucked up nowadays like i have to I, I'm so tired of being PC and I feel like it's a part of my autism. Like, why do people just get to say what they want to say and I have to be so fucking on cue? Oh, because I am I have autism and I'm trying to be like PC? No, like let me be fucking off the hinges. Like, I'm not saying that autistic people are off the hinges. I'm saying we're, we shouldn't be allowed to be off the hinges because that's why we end up masking, trying to be like everybody else and everybody else is off the goddamn hinges. <sighs> Anyways, that's how I uh, learned that I was neurospicy. So... What they say when you have um, maybe autism or uh, if you have ADHD, they say that you are neurodivergent as opposed to if you do not have autism or ADHD or Asperger's or things that are under that umbrella of neurodivergence, then you are neurotypical. And like I said, I don't necessarily believe neurotypicalness exists, but I know a lot of people who I'm sure would consider themselves to be neurotypical, <laughs> but you stim and you get overstimulated and you have disorganized thoughts, etc., etc. I personally feel like I found a superpower when I diagnosed myself with autism. Now, some people say, uh, like, I remember people were coming at Angela Seal. Angela Seal? Why? I feel like it's not her name, but I know that it is. Why? That was like a weird Mandela effect moment. But anyways, um, they were coming at her because she said she was self-diagnosed as autism. And they were like, well, you didn't get a doctor to really tell you. Is the doctor looking for me 24 fucking 7? No, I know when I'm stimulated. I know when I'm overstimulated. What are they going to do? Test my blood? Can you, I, don't even know if you can, I don't even think you can test autism in blood. Like, I don't know. Can you? So I think it's all behavioral. And I'm like, I don't need anybody to tell me I'm, I'm autistic. Like, I know I am. I will say that when referring to other people, I I don't know, don't know how people in the community feel about this, but um, usually it's better to say like that 
that person is someone who's living with autism, like that's a person with autism. Or yeah, that that is better than saying that's an autistic person. You, you, I think you kind of hear the difference, but we can have a conversation about that. I'd love to have someone um, that's on the spectrum on my podcast to talk about it, but I just want to talk about my experience like, and share how life has been because it's been really rough, I'll be honest with you. Like, I'm hyper, hyper, hyper aware. Well, it's rough and it's beautiful. It's beautiful because I found my freedom, but it's rough because I'm hyper aware of how I interact with people. Uh, I'm hyper aware of how I'm making people feel. I'm hyper aware of like my me paying attention to social cues. That's why I'm always like, I don't know if you hung out with me. I said, like, okay, if you get sick of me, let me know. Or like, if you need a break, let me know. Or like, if you this, that, and third, like, let me know. Because very often I feel like, damn, am I reading the room right? Like, am I, am I overstaying my welcome? Like, what happens if I overstay my welcome? Like, will this person not want to be my friend anymore? And so I think that in this 30th year of life that I'm entering, I'm really trying to figure out, like, how to separate people pleasing and fawning from from um being on the spectrum and being neurodivergent and how to feel safer in my body doing that um so yeah it's definitely a journey but i'm really grateful some of the ways that i've been able to cope with it um i'm still learning how to cope with it honestly like i'm looking for if anybody has any suggestions about like noise canceling headphones so i i thought that noise canceling headphones were like you put them on and you don't hear the world anymore but i think that they're act like there are a lot a lot of them that just cancel noise out when you're playing music but sometimes i don't want to hear shit i just want silence so if anybody has a recommendation for a great noise canceling headphone that's kind of cute let me know not a priority for it to be cute i really don't care i just want to be comfortable um I think that something that does help me when I get overstimulated is I go downstairs to the pool. That's very helpful for me. And I will um, go underwater. And to me, like, it makes me feel like I'm in the womb, but also, like, just the encompass of, like, I don't know. I just feel like it's like a hug. And it's just so quiet. Like, it's so quiet down there. So that really helps me out. But just be careful that you're not under there for too long. <laughs> Please. Um, trying to think of some other things that help me. Trying to just find, like, really, like, good slow tempo like solfeggio or like frequencies but not really all the time like it really depends on where i'm at like in my journey of like needing silence and stuff for me it's really noise and overstimulation that fucks me up or like even on the plane i was so overstimulated the other day like this girl she um she kept like trying to grab her boyfriend's hand sitting next to me and they just like kept doing annoying shit and then the lady next to me, like, she kept rubbing her legs, I guess, trying to, like, avoid blood clots. And, but I could not, like, my, I felt like my eyes were, like, trying to, like, look both ways at both of them. And I was just, like, over, it was just so much. Like, kids were crying in front of me. And then fucking, like, the people were coming behind me with the cart. It was, like, so much. I just couldn't stop thinking, like, I cannot wait to be able to afford first class because this is just a lot. So, yeah. I think that that's definitely how it shows up in my life as well. Um, of just, like, visual stimulation so sometimes when i go out to parties i'll put on the glasses that helps me out a lot um i'm trying to think of what else helps me glasses is really like the main thing because it just blocks out all the lights and stuff like that uh basically like, anything that can help me with like sensory stuff you know a lot of the time i don't have on clothing uh i realize that i don't like the feeling of clothing on my body i remember last year i had on jeans and i felt like i could just actively feel the jeans on my body it was so annoying so yeah, that was really interesting for me. Um, but yeah, I think that those are the ways that I've been coping so far. I mean, I'm gonna really be more aware now of how it shows up in my life and more aware of ways that I can find more ways to soothe this overwhelm that I get sometimes from when I'm overstimulated or have just like a crash out or burnout. Um, especially like ADHD burnout is so real and that shows up as like feeling paralyzed basically. Almost like how you feel when you're depressed. Like, when you, just, you have so much shit to do, you don't do anything. You don't do anything, you can't focus, can't concentrate, so you just lay in bed. That's ADHD burnout. That's really um, something that I've had to work through. So, yeah, I'm still working through it, still learning. Um, please feel free to comment your tips and your thoughts about, like, neurodivergency with your journey. Not, like, what you think about it as a whole, like, it exists. So, if you're like, it's wrong, like, fuck you. But if you are neurodivergent and you can relate to trying to step more into yourself and being more into yourself and not masking and living your best life as your neuro spicy self then comment below let me know let's be neurotypical friends from afar because i get overwhelmed when i have too many friends but 
yeah <laughs> I love y'all so much. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment, and head to my Patreon if you are watching this from YouTube, and head to my YouTube if you are watching this from Patreon, and let's chat it up. Let's have conversations about this on Patreon. I love you. 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 Mwah.